everybody, Amy here with Garden Up Landscape. Today I want to welcome you to the very first Tool Tuesday. I'm going to do a series of videos on tools, the types we use, how to use them, and today I'm going to go over all of the tools that we use in our kits um, that I issue to my new employees and that we just have, that we use on a regular basis. So. Um, no details about the tools, that'll be the following video series. I'll go into how to use each one, what it's for, and different tips and tricks I've picked up over the years. Um, so if you are watching this video because you are a new employee, welcome to the crew. We're glad to have you aboard. And if you're watching this because you're a YouTube viewer, please enjoy the video. Okay, so to begin, the first tools that I issue to all of my employees are two rakes, a shuffle hoe, and a shovel. So the first rake is a hard wire rake. This, these are great for heavy duty work like raking leaves up out of lawns and things like that. They are not good for light duty and detail work like trying to get leaves out of uh, bark, mulch, and flower beds. Um, but this is your good heavy stuff. We use wire, not plastic, because plastic breaks like every time I buy one, so I just don't waste my money on those anymore. Um, so the wire is very springy, it catches the leaves and bounces them. I especially love these rakes with the bend right here. So you'll notice that the actual rake is not parallel with the handle. It bends a little bit down and those are fabulous. It also has these reinforcing springs right here to keep it pushed down. Um, fabulous rake for uh, leaf raking and um, big cleanups. So. That is one of the first things I issue to every employee on their first day, as well as an expandable rake. I've already done my video on these. I absolutely love this tool. So basically the expandable rake is for your light duty stuff. This is for getting leaves out of flower beds with bark mulch or rock mulch or things like that. Things where you need a light touch and you may need to make it smaller to get in between or underneath a bush. You can also make it smaller to use this crossbar to make it stronger, okay? So, but do not try to rake leaves out of the lawn with this. You will break it, um, but do use it for light duty stuff. Light hand over your mulch, shake it back and forth a little bit, and it sifts things out, and it's just absolutely fabulous for detail work. So we use these. Next in line is the shuffle hoe. This has a whole lot of names. Shuffle hoe, hula hoe, oscillating hoe, all kinds of different names ending in hoe, okay? Um, it is a weed cultivator. Basically, you pull this just under the surface of the soil and it decapitates all the weeds. What it's great on are short, little weeds, newly germinated weeds, and preventing weeds from happening because, you know, as they're germinating, this tills up the soil and the weeds die so uh, it's really good about getting rid of those what it's not good for are tap roots and established weeds and things with a uh, rhizomes and stomas and things with creeping roots it just mixes it breaks those up and it mixes them into the soil and they'll make a bigger mess later but little fibrous roots excellent this is the best weeding tool i have ever found and then last but not least I always issue a shovel because we are gardeners. We need shovels. Pretty much everybody knows how to use a shovel, but I'll probably still do a video training on them anyway, just to show how to use them and what not to do with them. So that and also a bucket. I used to use those hard plastic laundry buckets that were great. They were huge. You could get a lot of debris into them. Absolutely fabulous, except that in a commercial setting, they tend to break in a month. I might get a year out of them, maybe, but it just turned out that I was buying more of them than they were worth. So this costs about four times as much, but it has lasted more than four times as long. So in my opinion, these are much more worth it. You get your value for your money. Um, this is Tub Trug brand, which I am a very big fan of. They're very sturdy and uh, stable. Um, it's a good sturdy rubber. Um, these have lasted. This is a three-year-old bucket. You can barely tell. It still looks brand new. So my only complaint is when you hold them like this, which is great. It's nice to um, carry your bucket in one hand, 
uh, but they do tend to just get and keep this bend, which makes it kind of hard to throw your stuff in because you've got a really tiny hole, but you know, just pull it open and then it'll work. So, love these. And that's everything I issue to my employees on their first day. I do require three more things that the employees must furnish because they're very personal to each person, but these are the ones I use. And that is hand pruners, must be bypass hand pruners. I want no anvil pruners on my crew. Bypass hand pruners mean that the blades pass each other. They bypass each other in order to make the cut. You still have a crushing blade, that's this fat one, but the crushing blade you can easily put on the outside of the plant, the part that you're taking away, and the cutting blade makes a nice sharp cut to make a nice clean cut and does not damage the plant that's left behind. Um, this is a Corona brand pair of pruners. This was a gift from the gardener that I used to work for that got me started. Uh, she gave me these, I don't even know, 12 years ago at least, and they're still going strong. I've never had any issues with them. I just sharpen the blades every now and again, and uh, they're, they're as good as they were on the day I took them out of the package. So Corona brand, good solid pruners. It's literally just a solid couple pieces of metal with a rubber grip on it and they're just fabulous. I love these. The other thing I require all my team to have is some kind of weeding tool. I don't really care what. Again, it depends on the person. What's your favorite weeding tool? In fact, comment below. What is your favorite weeding tool? This is mine. This is called a Hori Hori. Um, it works for digging up any kind of weed as well as a trowel. It also has a ruler on there and you can sharpen it and make the sides really sharp if you want more of a knife. Um, I don't normally do that because most of the stuff I want to cut I just use my pruners on or my saw so I don't usually bother sharpening this. Plus you've seen it, Lily likes to play with this so I don't keep it sharp. So Hori Hori is what I use in my kit. I absolutely love these. It also doubles as a self-defense weapon. Thank you to the Japanese. The last thing I do require but don't furnish is a pair of gardening gloves. Again, these are so personal to each person. Everybody has their own sized hand and their own preferences for what they like and don't like in gloves. Mine are the nitrile coated ones that are nice and uh, stiff, sticky, but they bend real well and I can still get a good grip on things. Um, and they've got the nylon that sort of breathes if it's not too hot, but you, you've, again, you've seen my videos, I don't wear gloves very often, so that's why these, even though they're over a year old, still look pretty new. I hardly ever wear them. Um, only when I'm doing something really pokey, like junipers or roses or something. Or my Oregon grape that I pruned yesterday. So that's that. That is our starting kit. The very basics that you need if you are working in the garden. The next things that I may issue, but I might just send out with the crew on a day-to-day -day basis, um, are more heavy-duty tools, like loppers. So I have several types of loppers here. The smallest one. This is Best Garden brand, okay? So I picked these up at a local hardware store. I do like the compact short handles, however, they, being short and compact, you lose a lot of leverage, so these really don't cut through very much without a lot of uh, elbow grease, you know what I mean? So um, I like having these in my kit, but I don't use them very often. My preference is this type which this is a Corona brand loppers. These are my favorite. They have actually lasted more than a year. Hallelujah. Um, they've stayed tight. They've stayed sharp. I do need to sh sharpen up that edge a little bit. It's losing its edge, but I mean, after a year, I can't complain too much. I love Corona brand tools. I think this is my favorite brand um, of tools, this brand name. So uh, these are my favorites. They have good long handles. Uh, so you get lots of leverage. Then I also have this nifty thing. This is Fiskars, which I'm not a huge fan of Fiskars, and I'll tell you why in a second, but this particular pair of loppers uh, has this cool gear right here, so you can get more leverage with the same amount of effort. And this is designed for cutting through big, gnarly branches that you wouldn't be able to get through with normal loppers. Uh, so you can get a lot of leverage. The complaints I have are in order to get this around a branch, it has to be able to open up all the way. 
which if you're trying to get it in to the base of a shrub can be difficult because there are other branches. So this, it's great, but it doesn't always work real well. And then the other complaint I have, and this is just Fiskars in general, is the lower quality metal that they use. We've hardly used this more than three or four times and it's already completely lost its edge. Um, I need to sharpen these again. And so these, can you see how wobbly this is now? That was just a couple of branches that did that. So, um, but again, that's just Fiskars brand. They don't last very long. But, so that's our lappers. Another thing we might use on occasion are pruning saws. This is my biggest pruning saw. Again, this is another Corona brand. I think I picked this up at Home Depot. I just saw it and thought that was pretty cool, so I bought it. Um, I use this all the time, and you can tell because I don't clean it very well, um, which is a problem, and I really need to do that. But, so I keep this in its original package that it came in, just so I don't cut anybody up. And you, tell, you can tell I've had this thing a long time, several years. Uh, this is a saw I use more often. It's another Corona brand, and this guy has a release button here so that it locks cl both closed and open. And this pruning saw is good for most of your general pruning work. I do have one more saw, it's a little bit smaller. Uh, this was actually the first saw I ever got and I've had this since I was in college in 2010. So uh, this one is Felco brand and these make really good pruning saws. This one has a, a safety lock to close it, but not one to open it. So you can just open it any time. It can come open in your tool bag, so be careful not to cut yourself on the saw because it's sharp. Uh, you can buy replacement blades for both this and the Corona saw. Um, so if ever they break or warp or anything, or they just get dull, um, you can also sharpen them, but I have no idea how to do it. It's easier to just get a new blade. Um, but they lock open and then you have to push the button to close it again. Make sure your fingers are out of the way. And then of course, a good old trusty pair of scissor hedgers. This is for hedging and shearing and doing stuff like that. We don't do a whole lot of shearing because it's not very good for a lot of shrubs, but we do um, ball prune, ball, ball hedge the lavender when it's done blooming, and we do use these on the occasional spirea or boxwood or barberry. So these are great. Again, Corona brand, can you tell I like Corona brand? Um, they've held their edge real well. I think I just bought these ones a couple months ago, but still, the fact that they're still sharp really says something. Um, these have a nice comfort grip handle, which is nice. And they also have this little notch right here this is useful if you want to get a big branch but don't have your pruners handy or you just don't want to switch tools you can use this tool for that too so that is the basics of our toolkit there are other things we use but that's pretty much what we use on a day-to-day -day basis so if you've learned something new make sure to subscribe and hit the like button if there's something you'd like to see me cover in a future video then leave a comment below and I will do what I can to cover that. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the garden.